everybody welcome back to my channel turnips to tangerines and today we are going to be making sourdough oatmeal bread there are a few steps we have to do before we can actually uh, start to knead the bread and the first thing we're going to do is in a large bowl here we're going to mix one cup of oats and I'm using the old-fashioned oats because that's what I always have on hand it does call for using uh, the quick cooking oats but I'm going to use these so I have interchanged them it'll just make the consistency of the bread uh, a little heavier I think is about it so I've always used use the uh, old-fashioned Quaker oats okay I got dogs barking so I don't know what they're fighting over now but that's okay and then we are going to mix uh, a half a cup Larry a half a cup of whole wheat flour which is right here and a half a cup Larry no oh my lord <sighs> always something here never fails nice and quiet till I turn this on seriously <laughs> always happens and if you hear a little background noise besides Larry barking it's my water boiling so then we're going to add a half a cup Larry a half a cup of light brown sugar packed this recipe makes two loaves of bread. It's a nice, hearty bread, and um, I just love this recipe. I may I have made it several several times, and it's just a nice, different type of bread, and it's good for sandwiches and just for toast in the morning, and then with some jam on and things like that. So I really I enjoy it, and I haven't made any for so long. I thought I got to get out my. Uh, I got to get out my uh, sourdough starter and get going here. Now they're barking because the water's boiling, just so as you know. Yeah. <laughs> and now we're going to add a tablespoon of salt. And I got my cute little tablespoon here. Isn't that cute? <laughs> I love these little things. Oh, tablespoon of salt. My little measuring cup there, or measuring spoon. Might as well get in the festivities. They come and go so fast. And then we are going to add one tablespoon of softened butter. It isn't super softened, but it will be once the boiling water gets on there. So that's okay. And I have boiling right now uh, two and a half cups of water. That's boiling. So that should be done pretty soon here. I have one of those really nice... Um, Oh, teapots from Dash. I really, really like it. It um, just boils water just like that, really fast, before you know it. It's not like the old-fashioned days where we had to put it on the stove and wait for it to boil. And Oh, geez. Maybe you don't remember that, but I do. I remember boiling glass bottles for babies and sterilizing those, too. So that's how old I am. Ugh. You young girls, you don't know how to... Oh, easy you have it wow and then we're going to pour the boiling water over this mixture and we're going to stir to combine and here's my i love this thing we're going to pour the boiling water over and we're going to stir to combine and i have a very funny feeling someone's doing something they're not supposed to do over there And they work and we're going to stir this around and then we are just gonna let this sit for about an hour until it come be, until it comes you know gets cool chills or cools off here a little bit and I'm gonna stir some of this my brown sugar and my flour here get it all nice and yummy oh that smells good already brown sugar in there let that melt yeah and that's what we're going to do we're just going to let that sit 
cool for a good hour until we it's you know cool enough for us to add the rest of our um, sourdough starter and our rest of our ingredients and then we will put it in our mix master and let it do some kneading itself I don't do kneading anymore I used to but I don't anymore so we'll be back been about a half an hour now since this has been sitting and it's still a little warm yet but I'm going to add a teaspoon of ground cinnamon to the mixture. I'm going to lightly stir it and then we're going to let it sit for the remaining half an hour. So it's a little warm yet but I thought well I'm going to quick add my cinnamon while I'm thinking about it here so I don't want to forget that it adds a really nice flavor to it so another half an hour and we'll be making our oatmeal sourdough oatmeal bread and it smells really good okay our mixture has now cooled and it's cool enough where we can eat start to go farther on our recipe here. We are going to, to this mixture, which is um, one cup of oatmeal, half a cup of whole wheat flour, a half a cup of brown sugar, a tablespoon of salt, and two tablespoons of butter, butter or you can use margarine, I prefer butter always, and um, two and a half cups of boiling water. And I added a teaspoon of cinnamon. The recipe does not call for that, but I have made this recipe for before, and I like the cinnamon in there, so that's why I add it. Sometimes I add two teaspoons, but this time I only added one for some reason. No specific reason why, I just added one. You don't have to add any if you don't want to at all, but I just love the flavor of cinnamon with oatmeal, so that's why I do it. And then, now, to this mixture here, we are going to stir in our starter. You stay here, Jujo, okay? Which is one cup of starter. And here is my active starter that looks really, really good. That I've had for a long, long time. And it's doing its thing here. And I will put it here so you can kind of see how bubbly it does get. And it is thick. I prefer my starter to be thick. Some people like theirs thin. I prefer mine on a thicker side. Just, it's a per personal preference, and once you start your starter and get it going, you'll have, you know, your personal preference also. Um, like I said, I prefer mine a little on the thicker side, um, if you can see that. Um, some people, stop it. <sighs> These dogs lately. Some people like theirs like as thin as a crepe batter, but I like mine a little thicker like that. And see how nice and bubbly that is? I hope you can see that because it is really nice and active as they say. So I'm gonna add that. And we are going to stir that in. And get it all out of there because that's what we want. That's what's going to make our bread rise and make have it with that nice sour taste that everybody loves. And I'm going to set that aside and then to the remainder of our um, starter in the, in the jar here, which as you can see there isn't a whole lot left in there, um, I will add two cups of, uh, well, not two cups, but a good cup and a half of flour and probably a cup of water. But I'll do that before we're all, when we're all done here. And that'll get it going for the next recipe that I want to have or just to set aside. Stop it, you guys. I don't know what you're up to and I don't care right now. No. And then we are going to add, we're going to slowly stir in uh, four cups of flour. So there's one. And two, and we are going to slowly stir that in here. Just keep going here. And when it gets nice and thick, we are going to put it in our machine here. And let that do the kneading. My arm's already sore just from 
stirring this up here. There. That's hard work, I'll tell you. Kneading dough and things. I mean, I don't know how bakers, they must really be strong. They must be able to knock someone out, I swear to God. <laughs> Okay, and that's about, oh, I'd say four, three and three quarters all together in here. And I'm going to slide that down and slide this down here. And I'll probably have to, oh, maybe add another cup as needed when I get it going here on my, um, when I start kneading it. I have my dough hook in. And uh, that's all ready to go. I bought my uh, mix master here mainly for using for the bread. I don't really use it for any other thing. I don't really use it for well, for um, you know mixing or whipping or things like that. If I have a large, like if I'm making this um, winter, I'll be making Tom and Cherry batter again. So then I will definitely be using the whip, but. Usually I just don't. And I am going to put this in here and then we're going to start our um, kneading. So let's get that done. And this has got to knead for approximately, oh, five to eight minutes, you know, depending. So let me get this going here and we're going to come back here. You can see I have got my um, mix master going here. We are going to add another, oh, I'd say another cup or so. We're just going to stir that in. We want it to come so it comes to a, forms a nice dough here. And then we're going to just slowly add more speed to it. Let the flour get in there a little bit. Yeah, yeah, better not. I have a little left, lower left. We're gonna slowly add the speed again, up the speed. Yeah, whoa! A bit more, and that should be plenty of flour. A total of about five cups or so of all-purpose flour. This does make two loaves. And I'm gonna let it go up a little bit more. And as you can see, it does like to shimmy. And I'm going to let this go for a good five minutes up to eight. And then next, we're just going to let the machine do its job here. That's why I bought one of these little thingies. I'm just going to let it go. It sure smells good. And I'm going to keep an eye on it. And I will be back. And that's basically all you do for right now. We're just going to let it do its thing. Our batter is done. Our bread batter is done and is nice and I had pulled away from the sides of the uh, bowl here, as you can see, and it really does look nice, nice and elastic and a little sticky, but that's what you want. And I'm just going to take this out here. Ooh, that is nice. Be a nice bread dough here. Take that out of there, and I will set that aside. And, oh, we will move our... Ma mix master there and then we will grab our this is our lightly greased bowl and what we're going to do is we're going to take out our batter here and we're going to oh this is nice this is nice this turned out really really super nice yeah nice and sticky here let me do it this way i'll have two hands dirty but that's okay see how nice that is look at that oh and does it smell good Like I said, this makes two loaves, 
two 9 by 9 or two 9 by 5 loaf pans of dough or loaf pans of uh, bread. So that makes, here, to say it simply, it makes two 9 by 5 loaves of bread. You can see how nice that came out of there? Look at that. How's, look at that, how nice and clean that came out. That is just nice and elastic, perfect. That's just what you want. I'm going to set that aside, and then we put this in our greased bowl. Get all that on there, and then we're just going to flip it over. Like a lightly grease the top. And we're just going to tuck it in there like that real good. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. Grease the top is nice and stick it in there. And then, just I kind of go like this. You don't have to, but it's just what I do. You know, to each his own, I guess, when it comes to your bread. You can already see some nice bubbles on there. Ooh. I'm telling you, this is going to be delicious. I can't wait to have some. And then... Get my hands done here. And then we're just going to take a nice clean towel, a kitchen towel, or you can use, you know, whatever you have. And we're just going to lightly put that on top there. And we're going to set it in a nice warm spot, which is in my living room, actually, by my furnace. So um, that's where I'm going to put it. And we're going to let it sit for, oh, two to or, uh, three to four hours depending on um, you know your dough it depends upon your uh, the activity of your uh, sourdough starter it depends how warm your house is so it all all the factors you know are different per household I have found so three to four hours and I will check it and hopefully it'll be all good and ready to go and then we will put it in our loaf pans and bake it off so stick around now i'm going to feed my starter so that it's ready for the next time i want to bake which will be very soon because i want to make this year will be the first year i ever tried making sourdough gingerbread cookies so right now as you can see i don't know if you can see this for sure but there's only about oh that much left in here is don't know if you can tell but there's only about that much left in from when I made the bread so before I forget and while my bread is uh, the, the dough is rising I like to quickly feed this and get it done so I don't forget or you know get uh, down the road and I'm like uh oh so I just take like a scoop like I said I'm not measuring or whatever you can use a cup two cups whatever I just use a scoop here and I put the scoop and throw it in. And like I said, some people measure and all this other stuff. I don't. I eyeball it all the time. I and I always have, and then my starter has always worked. So I, you know, I'm not gonna fool with a thing that's working for me, right? If you wanna, you know, measure and whatever you do that, I don't. So oh, I just wiped the cover off and now that's stuck. And then I just add a little bit of water. I just kind of eyeball that too. It's there. About that much. Put the cover back on. And it's all, give it a good stir here. Like I said, I like mine a little on the thicker side, my starter. So I keep mine like that. And then I kind of wipe down the sides. And do this number real good. Like I said, use don't use metal. I prefer to use just a glass jar here. I use this is uh, as a smaller top. Now the other one that I made uh, that I'm going to be showing the steps of how to make a starter. That one I was smart enough and I used uh, actually a bigger, bigger jar, <laughs> a wide mouth jar. So I just use a wide mouth or a ball jar, whatever I have left in my cupboard from canning, and I just do it this way and. Uh, I will wipe, wipe this off with a paper towel in. A lot of times I just take a like a butter knife and scrape off all the sides and just put it back in there and set it aside. And off I go. And this is what I do. Here's my little coffee filter on the top. And it's probably not even going to need a rubber band. And then I, there. 
do that and I set it aside and it's all ready to go and the next time when I need it it'll be ready to go if I wasn't going to be baking let's say within the next uh, couple weeks or so I would probably just put this in my refrigerator put on the you know the cover one of the uh, lids and then one of the bands that you use for canning and stick it in the back of my refrigerator and it's you know it'll sit out sit back in there for however long I want it to be and then when I want to use it I take it out of the refrigerator let it come to room temperature uh, pour off the discard and feed it again and I'm ready to go usually within 24 hours so now I'm just going to set this on my cupboard because, like I said, this weekend I hope to make some, um, at least the batter for the sourdough gingerbread cookies. So I just set this out on my cupboard and I just feed it once a day. Just dump out a little bit and add a little bit to it just so that it replenishes itself. Mm -hmm. So there you go. I am going to set this aside along with my other one I started back here. So I have two nice ones going and I am just going to finish up and eat my lunch and then we'll be back getting our oatmeal, sourdough oatmeal bread ready for the oven. Our sourdough bread batter has been sitting for uh, about three or no let me think here four hours and this is what it looks like it's all nice and puffy and all that kind of good stuff, nice and puffy. And now I have uh, two 9 by 5 inch baking pans, loaf pans, greased. And now I'm going to punch it down. Lightly get all the air out of there and kind of twirl this over here. There we go. Ooh, look at that. Yeah. And then, oh, should have smelled good. And then I am going to cut this in half. And we are going to make two loaves out of it. This is a really a nice active loaf of our dough here. It really has gotten a really nice rise and things to it. It's a really a nice active loaf. So that's good. So I'm going to just take this and kind of move my pan over here, push you down, and just kind of form this into, I mean, it doesn't have to be, you know, whatever, just a primitive loaf here, kind of, yeah, work it out a little bit, kind of do this number. It's really, like I said, a really nice, nice loaf here, kind of. Move it over like that and get it to where the top's going to be nice and smooth here, as you can see. And then I'm just going to place it in my pan and kind of, kind of make a little loaf out of it here. And that's about it we're going to do for that one. And there, that's one loaf done. And I'm going to move you over there. We'll do this one next. And here is the other, the other uh, dough. Like I said, this made really, this is really a nice soft um, dough. It's really easy to work with. It's nice and soft and, you know, very, very, very easy to maneuver, as they say. And I kind of tuck it in like that. You know, just to smooth the top off. We'll get it all on the bottom there. It's already active. My um, starter was wonderful. So this is why it looks so nice. And I kind of do this number. Kind of work it over. Oh. And then I plop her on in. And there we go. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to set it aside in our little loaf pans here. And we're going to cover it back up with our the same dish towel or the same towel we had before. Cover it up there nicely and uh, we're just going to set them aside. And we're going to let them sit and rise for another one and a half to two hours. I think these will be plenty, plenty done within an hour and a half, I hope. 
because um, they're really, it's a nice active battery. You can still see them, you know, starting to move already. So another thing I wanted to mention is I wanted to show you this book that I use and I recommend if you're starting out at all. It is um, something I'm still using 12 years later. It's the first really only book I bought. I have been following it to the letter. I bought it on Amazon for like six, seven dollars 12 years ago. And it's called Simply Sourdough, The Alaskan Way and it's by Kathy Dugan. Um, give it a try. I really recommend it for me. It kind of helped me through my first few trial and errors of uh, working with sourdough in general and I've never had a bad recipe from here. I have made almost all of them. There's a few I haven't and I'm not sure why but I just haven't made them yet and it goes into everything about sourdough, the recipe that we started earlier, um, and another video for the two cups water and the flour to get your traditional starter going. So I just wanted to show you this book. I would, you know, you'll definitely use it. And like I said, all these recipes, I have every single one of them in here so far. The donuts and the cinnamon rolls and the oatmeal bread and the sourdough cornmeal millet bread. All of these I have made and I've had success and luck with them. So for me, that's a plus anyhow. So this is how I started on my sourdough journey, kind of by myself. Every It was easy, simple to follow. I didn't need to go out and buy a bunch of different scales and measuring cups and all this other stuff. It was just very basic, very simple. And that's really all I wanted to do. I didn't want to, you know, get into the formulas of everything of making it. I just wanted to learn how to get a sourdough, sourdough starter going so I can make bread. And um, I haven't had any problems with it at all. I, like I said, I highly recommend this book if you're interested in starting sourdough starter and starting to bake with sourdough starter. I recommend this book highly. And um, you'll be on your way in a couple of days to making it. So I forgot to mention this before. I have mentioned it many times whenever I work with sourdough. I always mention this because I usually am using a recipe from this little booklet. And the only thing different, like I said, that I did with the sourdough oatmeal bread, which is right here. The only thing I did differently is I added, I even wrote it on here, is I added a teaspoon of cinnamon. I have added up to a... Two teaspoons of cinnamon and I have added a uh, half a teaspoon of nutmeg but that was okay I can remember this like you know I think I've made this like the third or fourth time I've made this specific recipe so I preferred the two teaspoons of cinnamon but today I only added one teaspoon the reason why you might say well why would you add that well for some reason and it's probably me but I love cinnamon and oatmeal together. I don't care if it's in bread or muffins or cookies or whatever. I just think that cinnamon and oatmeal go together. Um, they complement each other and I thought well why break up the marriage now? Just you know add a little bit of cinnamon to the bread and it makes it taste really nice. It gives it a little flavor. So that's that. So I am going to cover up my bread here and when we get back, we are going to bake the bread. We're going to let it sit for, like I said, one and a half to two hours. I'm going to cover it up. And then you uh, bake it at 350 degrees for 40 to 45 minutes. And that's about it. And you can butter the tops of the bread when you're done. I generally don't. So that's it. I'm going to cover this up and... We will be back when it's time to bake the bread, and we'll see how high they get. So, I'll be back again. Bye now. Okay, turn it off. Our oatmeal, our sourdough oatmeal bread has uh, been in the pan now, rising for uh, roughly two hours. So, I'm going to put it in the oven at 350 degrees. And we're going to bake it for about 45 minutes, 40 to 45 minutes. We'll give it a, a test. If you knock on the top of it and it sounds hollow, that means your bread is done. 
and then we'll take it out and we'll let it cool and of course and we're going to probably have a couple slices of it because it's going to be good I can tell. So as you can tell with the sourdough bread I mean you're not going to get your huge 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 rise like you do like um like with bread with yeast but it's still I think was in pretty good here so um we are going to pop it in the oven right now and we were going to let it bake for 45 minutes at 350 degrees. Bread is out of the oven and does it ever smell good? Now, if you wanted to, you could just put a little bit of butter on top of here, let it melt a little bit just to kind of, you know, get the top not so crunchy. It doesn't really matter though. I'm going to just do this real quick because I can tell. Whoa! I ha ha ha! But good, good breads there. Dogs came around them and they smelt the bread come out. Oh, it smells good. This is oatmeal, sourdough bread, the two loaves, and I'm going to just lightly stir her, spin it around here so you can see what it looks like from all sides. And it is definitely good. It smells, I mean, excellent. I can't even tell you how good it smells. Some butter. Good job, guys. And I'm going to put that down. Ooh, that is going to just be nice and yummy. Nice and melty. I can barely lift it up. It's still so hot. I just took it out a little bit ago, and I thought, nope, I'm just going to cut a piece anyway. Yeah. There we go. So we'll let that sit. But that looks very good, doesn't it? Yum, yum, yum. Look at that. Yummy, yum. Melty butter. Ooh, I love it. There. The dogs are going to love it. I'm just going to take this little bite here. Mmm. Mmm, mmm. Mmm. Oh, nice that looks. That is a beautiful big hunk of bread here. Sourdough oatmeal bread. And doesn't that look good? I think it does. Mm -mm. Oh, and a little bit of cinnamon in there really makes it taste good. Oh. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. 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 That was darn good bread. Mmm. Good. Nothing better than homemade bread. You have got to get your sourdough starter going. I just have to. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Well, I hope you 